Hello everyone, my name is Ellie. I'm 16 years old. Has there ever been a moment in your life when your only desire at that moment was to stop feeling pain? I stopped. And you know, it's more of a curse than a gift. I was just a normal girl my own age. School, friends, and even a boyfriend. On that fateful day, my boyfriend Andy and I agreed to meet at the playground at noon. I arrived a little early and waited for him, watching the children. I have younger brothers, and looking after the children around me is already habit. Suddenly, one boy's ball jumped to the side and rolled under the swing. One of the ball players ran over there, and I immediately tensed up. There was another child on the swing. I shouted something to both of them, but it was too late. In an instant, I ran and covered a boy with my body. Then came a blow in the back, and we were carried forward. The parents ran up to us, and I gave them the child. The baby's mother thanked me in tears, and his father started to help me get up. But I couldn't. My legs! I couldn't feel them. I couldn't feel my back either. Do you have any idea how scary it is? to stop feeling something that you usually don't even pay attention to? A few minutes later, Andy came and fell down next to me. I was already in tears. I was very scared. The ambulance picked me up. Andy contacted my parents. I was urgently sent for x-ray and then for surgery after being put into a medically induced coma. At the time, I couldn't believe that my life could be turned upside down in a matter of moments. Before the coma, I spent a few minutes with relatives. I had the feeling that I was saying goodbye. And then the darkness came. I woke up in a hospital bed. My head felt like it was made of cast iron, but I could lift it to look at myself. My feet were still there. My hands too. I tried to move my arm. It worked. Not very well, but I could do it. Then I switched to my legs. I wonder if they repaired them. Yes, I could move them. The sound of a blow on the bed awakened a nurse who was dozing nearby. She called for doctors. When several doctors entered the room, I was already glowing with happiness. I can move and I don't feel any pain. But the doctors, for some reason, were not happy and said we should wait for my parents. I couldn't understand what was wrong. Within half an hour, I could move my toes. Wasn't that a good sign? When my parents arrived, doctors put everything on the table. I was operated on the same day I was admitted there. The operation was successful, but there was a medical malpractice. My nerve was damaged, and now I can't feel any pain. I said, are you kidding? But the doctors drew my attention to the fact that one of them was pricking my leg with a needle all the time. I realized I didn't feel anything at all. A week later, my parents took me home. I was not very confident on my feet. I had to learn to walk again. At home, my dad carried me in his arms, and when we went to the hospital for rehabilitation, I moved around in a wheelchair. Only there, I could walk under the supervision of doctors. All this time, I was getting used to a new, painless world. So, several months passed. It was only thanks to the support of my family and Andy, with whom I constantly texted, <laughs> that I was able to get back on my feet. And now, the physiotherapy was over. I asked my mother when I could go back to school. My mother said that I would not go to school. Certainly not this year. They were afraid I might hurt myself because I didn't feel any pain. But why? I was healthy. And the fact that I didn't feel pain was even to my advantage. For example, the other day, a veterinarian came to us to vaccinate our cat. I had to hold her. And even though she scratched all my hands, I did fine, and the other day, I waxed my hair. And you know, now I'm even ready to put up with it. My father said the doctors rescheduled my surgery in half a year. <sighs> then they would be able to give me back the feeling of pain, reconnecting damaged nerves. 
Once, I asked to go for a walk with my friends, but my parents stopped me again. They forbade me to leave the house alone. And if I tried, they would lock me in my room. What a twist. What was all the rehabilitation for? To continue living in a bubble? This is home detention and undeserved. Have you ever been tried to save or support so that it would be better to be punished? I really wanted to see my friends, but most of all, I wanted to see Andy. Parents repeated, in a couple of months, not before. I didn't like this very much. And Andy kept asking for a meeting. I decided to meet him in secret while my parents were away. On Sunday, my parents were going shopping, and we had a few hours to meet. As soon as their car was gone, Andy came in. It was the first time we'd seen each other since the incident. Before that, there were only video calls. It was strange to hold a loved one and not feel his warmth or the touch of his hands, but I was still happy. It was the first time he was at my house, and I suggested that he come up to my room while I made tea. I poured a few cups and went up to him. Putting the cups by the bed, we lay down on it. It's been so long. Maybe our love will allow us to go to a new level in the relationship. Andy took my top off, and I took off his sweater. He threw me on my back. We were in such a hurry that we pushed something off the nightstand and didn't even pay attention. We lay on top of each other and kissed. This was the first time for me. I didn't feel anything, but the thought was exciting. Suddenly, Andy's face turned purple, and he looked at me with horror and whispered, Your hand, it. I looked at my hand and went into shock myself. <gasps> my hand was red and blistered. Apparently, at the moment of our intimacy, I accidentally turned the cup of boiling water on myself and didn't notice. What did I do? We ran to the bathroom and I put my hand under the cold water. Damn, I don't feel anything, even though my hand felt like it belonged to Freddy Krueger. I looked back to thank Andy for noticing all this time, but he was gone. I went out into the hall and saw the front door open. He escaped, left me alone. Before I could recover from his betrayal, I saw the door open completely. He's back, I thought. But no, it was mom and dad. Dad was carrying bags and laughing, but when he saw me, his smile disappeared. Then there were screams, tears, and a showdown. Dad put locks on my door and on the windows in my room. My phone was taken away and the internet was turned off. I was taught by a visiting teacher. Sometimes he let me dial Andy from his phone, but he wouldn't answer it. So I lived like that for almost half a year. Sometimes I was very angry with my parents, but the burns on my arm reminded me that there was some sense in their actions. The doctors finally decided that I had recovered sufficiently and performed a second operation. When I regained consciousness, I immediately realized that everything had gone well because I was in terrible pain. But I was happy with the pain. I guess over the past six months, I deserved to feel pain. After two weeks, my parents let me go to school. I was glowing with joy. This was the moment when I would see my friends again and Andy. But I was disappointed. When I came to class, everyone looked at me strangely. I could only hear their whispers. As it turned out, my dad had come to school and had a conflict with Andy. Everyone knew and didn't want any problems. I became a loner. And Andy, he just ignored me. I had been waiting so long to get back to school, and I was greeted like this? That really hurt. At the time, I felt like my world collapsed again, but the experience made me stronger, and my resentment of my former friends was quickly forgotten. There was no time to be upset. I had so much to try again. I'm at a different school now, and I have new friends a new boyfriend, new interests. Sometimes I remember that crazy year without pain and no, I don't want to repeat it. Please like my story so that more people will see it. Maybe it will help someone solve their problem. 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss new interesting stories. Good luck, everyone. Goodbye.